Last year, I did the unthinkable and I cut the roots of my plant in half. I didn't do it just to one plant, but I did it to three plants. Yes, you heard that right. I chopped down the roots of three of my house plants like some crazed maniac that's just been released from an institution to wreak havoc on the house plant community. And I've got the video evidence to prove it. In today's video, we're gonna look at why this is actually one of the best things you can do for your plant, as well as the results from those root prunings one year later. You never know, you might just become a serial root pruner after watching this video. So the three plants in question was my green syngonium, my established peace lily that I've had for years, and my Chinese money plant. So why did I cut them back so drastically? It's basically a valid alternative to repotting a root-bound plant. When a plant becomes so root-bound that its roots take up the majority of the space in the pot, this spells trouble for your plant. There is no longer enough soil in the pot to retain moisture and nutrients for the roots to draw up. Your plant is basically running on empty. Have you ever watered a plant in your home looked at it three days later, only to see it drooping like it's thirsty again. You might ask yourself, how this is possible? You just watered it for Pete's sake. Well, if you were to lift the plant out of its pot, you probably discover a severely root bound plant. There's no longer soil in the pot to retain moisture, so the roots dry up much more quickly than normal. And that's only water. Your plant will also be struggling to draw up the nutrients it needs to support its growth. This is exactly why root-bound plants stop growing. They've not got the Weetabix in their belly to help them grow big and strong. And not only do they stop growing, but the foliage also turns yellow. This is one of the main symptoms of a root-bound plant. There's a lack of nitrogen available to the root to make leaves green and vibrant. And this is exactly what was happening to my three plants last year. They were constantly thirsty, the leaves were turning yellow, and they weren't growing as vigorously as they should have been. The normal solution here, of course, is to take your plant out of the pot, discard the old soil, untangle the roots, and then repot it into a pot that is one or two sizes bigger than the existing pot using fresh soil. This gives the plant a new lease of life and it pushes out strong growth during the growing season. And I'm definitely not knocking this approach. Well, maybe the untangling of the roots part, but that's an issue for a different video. And this is usually the approach you should take for your root bound plant. But root pruning is a better solution in lots of cases. So what do you do if you have a large plant that is majorly pot bound, but you just don't have another pot that is one or two sizes bigger than the one it currently lives in? Sometimes we just don't want to keep going to the shop and spend money on yet another part for the same plant. Doing this with lots of plants can cost a fair bit of money, especially if we like buying pretty porcelain pots. Upsizing the same plant every year ends up taking more and more space in your home too. Sometimes enough is enough. In most cases, plant parents in this situation will just leave the plant to suffer in the same pot for years thinking there's no alternative. They may have a calafea that they've repotted 20 times in the past, but have decided to not bother anymore because it's taken over the house and they just don't want to buy the biggest pot in the store. So they let it live in that same pot, getting more and more pot bound till eventually the plant is so yellow and sick that they lob it in the trash. Well, there is a much better alternative my plant friends. It's the wonderful world of root pruning. Root pruning is one of the dark arts of houseplant care. You might assume that hacking up the roots of your plant will only send it on a one-way path to plant heaven. This is certainly how I felt when I first heard about this practice, but since doing the research and putting my money where my mouth is, I can tell you it benefits your plant in so many ways. And I get it, it sounds pretty scary to take a knife or pruning shears to the roots of your beloved monstera and cut them up, but trust me, your plant will not die so long as you follow one basic rule. Aim to only cut off about a third of the root structure at a time and never more than half. Your plant absolutely needs to have some roots left to be able to draw up moisture and nutrients to the foliage. It will probably survive if you were to cut off more than half, but it's better to be safer than sorry and avoid the risk of the plant going into too much shock. Plants are surprisingly resilient though, they do always find a way to bounce back. After all, we regularly take cuttings from them and those cuttings happily grow roots within only a couple of weeks, so they do find a way to survive. So root pruning won't kill your plant and that's great, but the truth is it can actually make your plant thrive. It could be highly beneficial for a tired looking plant. Think about it. How old and tired do you think the roots of your established plant are? Chances are they've been present with your plant for years and years 
even decades in some cases. The peace lily that I pruned last year is probably my oldest plant. I think I've had it for at least 20 years. I've never touched the roots until last year. And that's a long time to be growing old and tired. These roots needed a new lease of life and that's what pruning them back can do. It removed old, tired roots that have served the plant well over the years and replaces with new, vibrant, young, sexy roots to give the plant a much needed facelift. You see, roots grow more vigorously than foliage. The plant is constantly growing its root system. It doesn't really take long for it to replace the roots you've cut away. And you might think that reducing the volume of roots in the pot by a third would reduce its ability to uptake water and nutrients. But actually, the reverse is true. When a plant's roots are pruned, it stimulates the growth of new roots, which over time increases the overall density of the root system. And this increased density allows the plant to absorb more water and nutrients from the soil. The process for this is pretty straightforward. Identify a plant that is in need of a repot that you don't want to upsize, or even a plant that you think has damaged roots. Lay it on a wooden bench or chopping board and grab yourself a large sharp knife. I like to use a serrated bread knife because it cuts through like butter. You can use pruners if you like, but I find it much easier just to chop away using a large knife. Don't bother untangling any of the roots. Lay the plant on its side and chop the last third of the roots off using nice long sweeping motions. Next, put the plant upright and cut away some of the roots around the side of the root ball. Doing this allows you to add soil around the whole root ball when you put the plant back in its pot giving it room to regrow roots at the bottom as well as the sides. Prepare the same part that the plant was in with some fresh soil at the bottom. I simply use five parts compost to two parts perlite. You can easily make this yourself without having to buy premium soil mixes. You need a good potting soil with good drainage for strong healthy roots. Add your plant to the pot and make sure that the crown of the plant, the part where the plant meets the soil line, is at soil level. Backfill around the root ball with your soil mix, and I like to tap or bounce the pot on the table to get rid of any air gaps, and then continue to fill with soil. This ensures that all the roots of the plant have good soil around them. Give it a good drink, and then keep it in a bright spot in your home. Although root pruning is great for your plant, there is an element of shock it will be going through, so give it lots of natural light to allow it to photosynthesize and store energy. People often ask me in the comments section on my videos when the best time to repot their plant is, and I say there is no best time. You can repot any time of year, because the roots are growing all the time, even in winter, unless you consistently keep your plant in temps below 10 degrees Celsius, which is unlikely. Just because the foliage growth has slowed, does not mean that the root growth has slowed too. This is exactly the same for root pruning. If it's warm enough in your house, then the roots will be growing all year, so you can make the cuts any time. As with all medical procedures, there are some side effects that you might see on your plant, but honestly, they're nothing to worry about long term. I saw these side effects for a couple of weeks on my plants last year, but it really do bounce back really quickly. So here's the small print. Only joking. Root pruning can be a stressful process for a plant, particularly if you cut away more than half of the structure. This stress can cause the plant to wilt, drop some leaves, or for some of its leaves to turn yellow. There's honestly nothing to panic about in this situation. Just carry on with your normal care routine, give it lots of light and the water it needs, and it'll bounce back quickly. In some cases, there might be a little stunted growth in the first few weeks after the prune. This is simply because the plant is growing and replacing the roots you've pruned. So it needs just a little bit of time to get back to firing on all cylinders. Again, cutting away more than half the roots causes this issue more because the plant has a lot of root tissue it needs to replace and it's not immediately able to draw up nutrients it needs for growth. There is a chance that you can introduce bacteria to the root area that can lead to disease problems, but honestly, this only happens if we use a knife that is supremely rusty. Just use a nice clean knife or scissors when making the cuts. There's no need to disinfect or anything, just give them a quick wash with soapy water and you're good to go. And if you have a plant that grows rhizomes in the soil from which the stems grow, such as the ZZ plant, then avoid cutting into the rhizomes. This has potential to cause dieback on the stems that are attached to the rhizome that you cut. Since pruning all three plants last year, 
They've all responded fantastically. They've all put out lots of new growth and they look healthier than ever. Look at the root structure of my green syngonium. You'd never have known that I only pruned it back last year and I'd say it's ready for another prune. My peace lily looks as bushy as ever with lots of healthy leaves. I'm sure it's going to start flowering now that spring is here. And my Chinese money plant is also looking really great and is even flowering at the moment, which is something you don't often see with this plant. It's clearly very happy with its lot in life. Earlier, I mentioned not needing to untangle roots when repotting a plant being for another video, but it just so happens that I've already made that video and you can watch it by clicking on this link here.